One of the great things about this current era in technology when it comes to makers and hobbyists and amateurs is that we've come so much further than just the home computer revolution that we kind of had in the 80s and 90s. Now we're at a time where you can get kind of small development boards that allow you to control kind of stepper motors, turn lights on and off, read sensor data and connect to the internet or connect over Bluetooth to kind of transmit data up to the cloud where it can be processed. And this is much, much more than we've ever had previously before. And today I want to look at a particular board called the Real Board. It's a microcontroller board that you can get relatively cheaply that allows you to do a lot of really interesting things. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So what I have here is the real board from Fitech. Now it was originally made as a kind of a badge for a conference. There's even a little hole here for kind of stringing it around your neck and there's this e-ink display so that you could kind of, the badges would tell people and there's Bluetooth support in it so the badges could kind of talk to each other. It's got a whole bunch of sensors including kind of temperature and humidity and it's got proximity sensor, and it's got LEDs on it. It's got a really, it's really a very complete board that you can do a lot with just straight out of the box. There's a lot that you can play with without actually needing to build any hardware circuits. Now it's based on a Cortex uh, M4 microprocessor from ARM, microcontroller from ARM and that comes in a package from Nordic uh, Semiconductor. Now the thing about a microcontroller is it's different to let's say a system on a chip that we would get inside a mobile phone or inside a device like the Raspberry Pi. A microcontroller is much much smaller, runs at much much lower uh, frequencies, doesn't include things like a GPU, doesn't include things like memory management, so it's a much much lower level kind of device. But still it's very capable of running an operating system and you'd normally run what you call an RTOS, a real-time operating system, which is kind of a bare bones thing that gives you access to all the different sensors, all the different peripherals, the e-ink display, but yet allows you to do things like threading and memory allocation and locking, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. So this particular board is designed to run Zephyr OS, and that's a real-time operating system from the Linux Foundation. So that's the same people who are responsible for kind of the guardians looking after Linux, but actually they now have a real-time operating system. And it is a much more smaller, much more condensed operating system because this board, for example, only has 256K of RAM and one megabyte of flash storage. So of course that's very different to what you'd get in let's say a Raspberry Pi or of course in a smartphone or in a desktop. We're talking very, very different small amounts of RAM and small amounts of storage. But of course the advantage is, is it can run from a battery. You just put in a triple A battery here and you're gonna get hours and hours and hours of life out of it. And every time you switch on, the program is read directly from flash and then runs in that 256K of memory. And that's a certainly enough memory for doing, you know, a lot of complicated tasks. I mean, back in the day of the computer home revolution, home computer revolution, back in the 80s and 90s, I mean, way back then you had the ZX81 had 1K of memory, you know, the Commodore 64 had 64K of memory, the ZX Spectrum had 48K of memory. I mean, we've come a long way since then, and a 256K of memory is a luxury. It's a real luxury. So Zephyr OS is a feature complete operating system in the fact that you can do things like full access to that Bluetooth 5 stack, you can read and write to that e-ink display, you can read and write sensor data, you can even do uh, networking if you had uh, the networking uh, stuff connected to it, use threading and there's memory pools and there's locking and there's queues and there's all the kind of stuff that you would want to have inside an operating system but actually it is designed for these devices with not very many resources, not very much uh, RAM, and not running at very high uh, CPU frequencies. So using Zephyr OS is fairly simple. It works on Windows and Mac OS and Linux. You basically go to the Zephyr OS website. It gives you full instruction on how you download the development environment, and they give you absolutely loads of uh, example programs. I've tried it on several different development boards that I have, and it works absolutely great. Particularly, I've enjoyed using it on this uh, real board because of this e-ink display, and we'll talk more about that in a, in a moment. And basically, it is kind of command line stuff. You kind of write your C code, in an editor, you know, you can use a complicated modern day editor, but at some point you need to kind of just do kind of compiling. It's got all the tools for the compiling. It can use make, it can use ninja. Okay, and then at some point, once you've written the program, you flash it over USB onto the board, 
and it resets itself and it starts running. You can do debugging as well over USB. So it's a full development environment, but in the end, remember, you're developing for a board that you can unplug, walk away with running from a battery, and it will do the thing that you've programmed it to do. Now, one of the great things I like about this board is the fact that it comes with so much stuff. Now, I'm not a hardware engineer. I'm a software engineer, so if you give me kind of, you know, a computer and a compiler, I'm happy. But if you now say to me, well, Gary, can you start building these circuits? Well, that's a bit more difficult. I could do it. I could struggle my way through it. But actually, if you give me something that's got all the stuff on it to start with, then I'm much happy. And that's really where I've struggled with things like the uh, Arduino, because when you get that kind of microcontroller, you don't really get very much to start with. It's full of pins and full of outlets that you can plug everything into, but actually in the baseboard you don't get very much. This board actually is very different because you get all that sensors, you get buttons, you get Bluetooth, you get LEDs, you get that e-ink display all built in. So you can really kind of get it out of the box and start playing with it straight away. And I've really enjoyed having a display because it just means you can play with so much stuff. You can see the results on the display and then you can really kind of just enjoy using it. So let me give you a quick demo of what this board can do using the demo app that they provide. Now the first thing to notice before we go any further is that this doesn't have a battery in it at the moment and yet you can still see text here on the screen that's because it's an e-ink display which is a really really great feature. Maybe on other development boards this would be a normal display and as soon as you disconnect the power everything goes but this is great for doing apps that need to display something you know a door sign a badge kind of the last data that it, it kind of received over Bluetooth or whatever, and you can display the results here knowing that it's gonna stay there even when there's no battery. So let's uh, have a quick look at the board. Here, of course, we've got the e-ink display. Here at the bottom, there is some proximity detectors and uh, light sensors, which will change these readings here later. We'll have a look at that. Switching it over on this side, you've got the battery connector here. You've got a reset button and a normal button that you can press for interaction two different USB ports for kind of power and for debugging if necessary, and a switch here to say whether you want it to run from the battery from USB or to be switched off. And of course, this uh, connector here can all be programmed up with different GPIO stuff, and they give you the full uh, kind of diagrams for this if that's the kind of thing that you're into. And as I said, here's that hole, so you can actually turn this into a badge. Okay, real board from a Fitech. Okay, so let's power it up and uh, see what happens. So the board's just gonna kind of clean that display there, and there it says Gary Sims, because this is the badge demo that they give you, and that will stay there. Now, if I unclick the battery, that will stay like that. But if you press the button here on here like this for a long time, you can actually get it to display some sensor information. So as you can see here, it tells me the temperature and the humidity, and that's all from sensors on the board. There's also an accelerometer, X, Y, and Z. So if we kind of tilt it like this a little bit, those numbers will change, and you can use that for all manner of different ideas. You could even build yourself a little fitness uh, device out of this. And then there's a light sensor and a proximity sensor, and if we kind of go in close here, we can see that those, those numbers kind of change, which means you can do different things Things like that. So uh, let's just have a quick look at the uh, Bluetooth aspects. I'm going to do is reset the board, press the reset button. Let me find something here to, to prop this up. Let's see whether that's going to do uh, a good job. Yeah, that's, that's kind of good enough. Okay, so I've got my smartphone here and I'm running an app from Nordic, which is called NF Connect, which is how you can connect to their Bluetooth. It's a generic app, but of course you could write your own app uh, to do this. And we can see here it says real board, that's found the real board. And at the moment here it says real board on the display. I'm gonna connect to it. Okay, and then what you can do is you can go into here and if we write to this particular attribute and we type in here, Gary explains and then send. Okay, it's now gonna pair these two things up. So we type in this pass key 147013. Okay. Pairing complete, Gary explains. So you can see how we can use Bluetooth to control this board. And of course this would be a two-way connection 
those temperature sensors that I showed you earlier, the humidity, any other stuff that you've connected up to this thing can be sent to a Bluetooth app. Bluetooth app can be used to control it. And you've got all this stuff here out of the box, sensor, sensors and the display and Bluetooth, and you don't have to start building complicated circuits and you can use this board and really start to do some experimenting uh, straight away with everything out of the box. And of course, Zephyr itself is uh, open source, completely free. This, this tool is uh, free to download from the Play Store. And that's it, you've got everything you need. It's a really a great way to get into microcontrollers. Okay, so there you have it. So there is a look at the real board. I'll leave a link below in the description to show you where you can buy it. And I highly recommend it if you want to get into microcontrollers, if you want to get into board development. Of course, there are many boards out there to choose from, but I, I do did enjoy using this board, as I said, particularly because of the Bluetooth and particularly because of that e-ink display, because those two things combined means you can see your results and you can also talk to, let's say, a smartphone app and you can kind of get that communication going. And that opens up a whole sort of realm of different uh, possibilities. Well, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below what do you think about the potential of the real board or do you have another preferred microcontroller board that you use? I'd love to hear about that in the comments below. Also, don't forget to share this video amongst your friends and on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.